Hi, welcome to another EV Blab. This one should be reasonably quick. It comes from the forum yet again. The forum never ceases to amaze me. The, uh, the manufacturers cannot hide anything from the forum members. They just find everything before they're released. It's fantastic. Awesome, guys. Um, it turns out that um, Tektronix, it looks like they're releasing, I don't know when, but they're going to be releasing a new... Uh, scope, it's based, it looks to be based on the MDO 3000, which you've um, seen a lot of. It's called the AGO 3000 series data sheet, and somebody on the EV blog forum, sorry, I forget who it is, found the um, LinkedIn, the data sheet, or a pre release draft data sheet to the new AGO 3000 series. From what I can see in all the specs, it looks like it's basically exactly the same as an MDO uh, 3000 with one major difference, we'll, which we'll take a look at. Now, this isn't surprising because um, Agilent Keysight, never get used to Keysight, Keysight just released, of course, their, well, recently released their um, 3000T series, the Touch One, which you've seen in a previous video and that was kind of sort of a knee-jerk reaction response to Tex MDO um, 3000 they tried to one-up them and the manufacturers try to continually try to one-up each other it's relentless and it looks like Tech are going to respond to that soon. The new AGO 3000 series um, scope is is it's a, a what's called a gravity compensated scope and this one I find interesting because I did a video on this um, I don't know, what was it, you know, nine months, 12 months ago, I'll link it in um, down below, I might even maybe edit in a little thingo from it, um, where gravity can have an effect on reference crystal oscillators, and I've got my, it's, this is linked to the previous video, I'll do it in a bit more detail, but um, I've got my CSIRO rubidium frequency standard here, and I've got my um, Agilent Frequency counter here, and what's it? Sorry, I can't see. I can't see on the LCD. What's it displaying now? Okay, it's displaying 999. It's pretty close to the nominal 10 megahertz. Okay, but if I or 998 or whatever it was, put the tilt in bail up like that, what do we get? We get 999. It actually changes when you tilt it, and it's going to change fairly drastically. Well, drastically if I turn it upside down. What's it reading now? There you go, 989. It's changed by 10 digits there. Look, Ho hopefully you can see that. All right, sorry, my leads aren't uh, long enough here, but we turn that over and ta-da! And that's, you should see it changed by, I don't know, 10 um, least significant digits there or, uh, you know, 0.01 hertz, which is about one part per billion if I've got my decimal places wrong I often mis mi mix them up anyway one part per billion and that's what this effect is is called the 2g tip over effect and as I said done a previous video on it so check it out but it's interesting that tech are releasing a new scope that actually compensates for this well known well not really well known but in the, um, the, you know, the industry I come from, seismic industry, very well known that the orientation of crystal os oscillators changes based on the gravitational field. That's what happens. It's a real phenomenon. It's not much. We're talking like typical in the order of, you know, one to ten parts per billion. So you need like a, an 11 or 12 digit um, counter to actually see it. That's why it's not normally a problem in scopes. But what Tech have done with this new one is the only difference I can see between the MDO 3000 and the new AGO 3000. What does AGO stand for? I don't know, Advanced Gravity Oscilloscope or something. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, figure out your own name. Um, they've added a TCXO uh, reference oscillator because this is the other thing Keysight added this is the thing Keysight added to their uh, 3000 touch series was a higher stability reference oscillator. And tech have obviously gone, well, we're going after that market too of the high stability oscillators. So they've not only whacked in a TCXO, which has, um, it's a real schmick one, 0.05 ppm, typical. Keysight went from like a five digit frequency counter to an eight digit frequency counter. 
seems like the new tech scope has a 12 digit frequency counter awesome everyone's one up in themselves on the frequency counters fantastic so when you've got a 12 digit frequency counter like this it matters the orient the orientation of the thing matters just doing the tilt in bail like that matters so you know, major applications for this like airborne applications when you know you're using a scope in a plane for military applications and stuff like that the industry I come from vibration is a big thing that can also affect um, your uh, uh, horizontal time base which is uh, derived from the internal reference in this thing so it's all great to have a TC temperature compensated crystal oscillator in there and a real precise one but if you tip the feet up and it's it's going to change well that can be a huge deal so what they've got is let me read all the wank is proud to introduce the world's first oscillators capable of limin eliminating the effect of gravity um, through a patented L electromechanical gravitational field sensor and extensive calibration uh, the gravitational field sensor detects the orientation of the scopes crystal that's not rocket science um, and then corrects for any errors so they've obviously got some sort of lookup table which they uh, program during the calibration and it says that they have a nine day factory calibration on this new AGO series scope as opposed to a, no a couple of hours which it takes them to calibrate the um, MDO 3000 there you go um, so unheard of levels of time based precision blah 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 so it's a gravity compensated oscilloscope awesome and well oh, I can see everyone trying to one-up themselves Keysight will probably go oh crap we have to now release a gravity compensated scope Rigol will probably figure out a cheap way to introduce it in there because you could probably use it with a um, you know a, just a cheap MEMS accelerometer you can probably do it with that they're using some sort of electromechanical thing in this new scope to go along with that the, the specs here which I'll link in gravity compensation um, 0.01 parts per billion you know how I told you that um, it's typically going to change by one part per billion or 10 1 to 10 if you flip the, um, the the scope or the frequency counter or your oscillator upside down well they're claiming 0.01 parts per billion maximum for a plus minus 2.5 G range over a 5 to 500 Hertz vibration so there you go um, I have no idea when it's coming out I'll try and get one because I'd love to have a look at the gravitational mechanical gravitational field sensor thingo in here awesome Tektronics leading the field yet again gravity compensation probably look out for gravity compensation in upcoming you know in the next year or two Keysight and Rigol scopes too so there you go that's just a quick blab I think I waffled too much as usual I'll link in the data sheet down below check it out get I'm rather excited by gravity compensated scopes I want extra precision in my scopes you know tilt in bail like that can affect your horizontal time base no thanks <sighs> give me gravity compensation anyway I'll see if I can get one and we'll do a tear down catch you next time